Hey, hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today's a really important video. We're gonna be talking about changing out this 30 amp connection on our camper. This is the connection that would go to the plug that leads to shore power. And from this plug, it powers our load center, our converter, our battery charger. First thing I'm gonna do is show you what I use and how easy it is to swap this, if that's what you came to the video for. But stay tuned, because afterwards I'm gonna talk about why I had to do this, and it was serious. How I found out that I had to do this, and probably most importantly, what I could have done to prevent this. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you can take a manual screwdriver, or an electric screwdriver, and take these four screws out of the old plug. Make sure, obviously, you're not connected to shore power. If you wanna disconnect your battery, you can. It doesn't really make a difference. But we're gonna take these four screws out to remove this old plug. Now, generally, there's no adhesive or sealant there. There's usually like a foam gasket like this to make it watertight. So this is gonna be really easy to do. With the screws removed, and you can save them, you might reuse these, this is gonna pull out from the wall and you're gonna expose what's called Romex. It's a sheath type of conductive wire. Now for these 30 amp receptacles, this should be 10 gauge Romex. If you bought your camper from any place reputable, this is all going to be correct. It's just this connection point that we're gonna be replacing and swapping out. So with the Romex exposed, there's two collars on the back of this outlet. The first one usually just threads off, and then there's like a quarter turn that allows this to slide back, and you can separate the two collars from your outlet. From here, we're gonna res remove the screws that are connecting the conductors. Just loosen each set of screws, and once they're loose, the wire comes right out. I'll usually use a manual screwdriver to do this part, but make sure you take a photo if you're a beginner. You don't know if you have to take a step backwards, and it's always a good idea to see where the black wire, the white wire, and the copper wire went on the existing setup. I'll help you out with the new stuff, but go ahead and take a photo. It always has a better memory than me or you. With the old one removed, we can draw these old collars off as well, and we'll get to this once the insulation is done, but there's a bunch of charring and melted plastic around the neutral on this one, and there's actually a little charring on the line section too. So now it's going to be time to install the new one, and we're going to do it a little differently than how this one was done. So I'm going to link that in my description so that you're getting the right product to do what we're going to do today. So the one that we're going to be using instead of having the two threaded sections on the back, is gonna have one section that actually sandwiches in when we screw this to the camper. But it has a strain relief. This is actually gonna pinch onto the sheathing of the Romex and do a much better job. So now, you can inspect your wires. If there's any charring or they, uh, there's some patina on there, you can snip them back and strip a new section. There'll be a strip guide actually printed on your outlet so you know how much to strip, or you can just clean them up. If they're in good shape, it's perfectly fine to reuse these. The first step we have to do though, is establish how to use this strain relief. And this can be a little tricky. I'm gonna take my manual screwdriver and I'm gonna unscrew this little clamp that's on the back. Now, sometimes I unscrew it all together. Sometimes I just loosen it up. This is one of these projects that you might have to fiddle around with this to get it right. But for now, I'm just gonna loosen it up. If your new plug is the same size or smaller than the one you're replacing, usually you're fine. It makes a good watertight seal and you're gonna screw it in securely. If your new one is slightly larger than the old one, you're gonna be in a tougher situation. What you wanna do then is tuck the wire in, find the hole saw that fits in the hole that's there, along with the hole saw that's gonna fit the new plug that you're using. And you actually attach both of the hole saws together. So you're gonna thread this in, and this is gonna allow you 
a little double hole saw here that's gonna give you a center point to do your drilling. That's what keeps it from hogging around and making circles. It's a neat little trick. So with these screws loosened, you can actually open up a space now. Now I'm gonna pass my Romex through that space. And when I tighten them down, it's gonna clamp the wire. That way if it gets pulled from something underneath, maybe underneath my galley, it's not actually pulling on the screws that are making a conductive electrical connection. This is a nice safety feature. I see a lot of videos online where people are just pushing the wire through this hole. That's an accepted practice, but this is here for a reason. So even if it's a pain, it's really worthwhile to try to use it. So I tucked that Romex in up behind the strain relief and we're going to tighten that up once we're done. That strain relief should pinch around the housing. It's usually orange or yellow, sometimes it's white, um, and not on the actual sheathing for the wires themselves. It's on the, the bigger sheathing that you find underneath. We're now going to tighten these conductive ends, the bare copper ends, into the right spot on this and make sure it's oriented the proper way then we'll tighten up the strain relief. There's no uh, need for me to try to make this look more professional or easy than it is. Sometimes it is a lot of wrenching around to get this wire to go through the strain relief. I think it's well worth it. So the product I'm trying to include in my description will have a white, a green, and a black. And that's gonna go with the white, the black, and the bare copper. That green is always the ground, like bare copper. This is different on AC than it is DC. I don't know why they make it so complicated, but it really couldn't be easier with the device that I'm using. Some other devices, if you go with a different one, will say L, C, G, line, common, ground. It's gonna be easy enough to figure out which is which, but I like that they made these color coordinated. So I firmly attach my conductors. You make sure that the screws are backed up, your wires are stripped to the right length, you push them in and you twist down on them. Give each one a tug and test it out. Once the strain relief goes down, you can compress this into the outlet cover. It should make a nice connection before we go to return this to the wall. Because once we return this to the wall, it's going to be a nice tight squeeze to go in there. We return the screws and we're done. This comes with a gasket that provides a watertight seal. So now we've swapped this out. Um, I can open it up to maintain from time to time to make sure those screws are still tight. But this is designed to last a lifetime. It's going to make a nice, safe connection. <laughs>
Okay, so with the screws in from the outside, you're good to go. I mean, the hardest part of the project is sometimes just bending those wires and getting everything to fit in snugly, but take your time. It's important that all those parts come together tightly and you make a good seal from the outside. Now, if you wanna be a little extra precautious, you could probably take some, you know, a ProFlex RV or a high quality uh, sealant to go around there, but this is designed to make a good gasket finish and I, that's what the manufacturers are doing when they're installing them on brand new campers. But now we have a good safe plug that should last a lifetime. So stay tuned if uh, you wanna know why I had to do this and how I found out with some maintenance tips. I'll give you those now. Okay folks, so this discussion about how this plug went bad, you might find talking to a friend who has an RV, but this isn't something that I think you'd find on a lot of YouTube channels. It might not be that entertaining. But there's a lot that can be learned from this. The situation that happened with our camper is that Lucia was out on the road. Camper was about a year and a half old. I was actually gonna meet her out there. She was just out there with Ripple. I got a phone call that said she had no shore power in the camper. So your guess is as good as mine. We went through the basic things, right? check the breakers on the pedestal, check the breakers inside the camper. If you wanna get a little bit more advanced, you can use your tester or multimeter. Make sure there's not a problem with a power conditioner or a surge protector. But these are the steps that we go through and uh, none of those panned out. So the ace in the hole that I usually have in this situation is that oftentimes we wire the AC system inside the camper through a GFCI or a breaker that has a reset button. On teardrops, oftentimes it's in the galley. On bigger campers, you find it in the bathroom. Oftentimes, if that GFCI is tripped, the rest of the camper's alternating current or shore power is not going to work. So I had her go back to the galley and reset that. It works a lot, but it didn't work this time. And in fact, we could tell from our multimeter, you know, I'm on the phone, that the battery wasn't charging either. So that wouldn't be a GFCI issue. I was stumped and uh, luckily we have good solar, a really good battery. Lucia went through the first week of that trip without needing shore power. But when I got there, the first thing I did was look at the connection between here and the load center inside. I actually tested for voltage at the lines coming in to the WFCO, the WIFCO load center. There was no voltage there. That's a, actually a sigh of relief because it lets me know that that unit didn't burn up. It just wasn't actually carrying voltage or current through this plug to the load center inside. When I pulled this out, just like I did earlier in this video, I found burnt and connections that had actually melted the plastic on this. The wires just pulled away. So what had been happening, and I suspect for the entire time we owned this camper, was that that wire was just floating inside this inlet and it would make a connection, but every time it vibrated or moved, it would arc. It creates a spark which creates heat. This is very dangerous. This easily could have burned this camper down inside this little uh, cavity that has wood and combustibles going into the galley. When I took this off, none of these screws had been tightened. Now I'm not in the position to uh, say that, that it, they were never tightened from Braxton Creek, but I, can know in, I know in all of my experience with this stuff, these don't loosen up like that. If they were tor torqued you know, firmly, either with a torque tool or just a good firm twist with the screwdriver, they don't back out. And all of these were actually backed out to the complete open position, as if you had just bought the plug brand new, stuck the wires in and the lunch bell went off and you took off uh, and finished the camper for the day. So the lesson to be learned here, I try to maintain this camper really well. I make videos about maintaining my teardrop. Pop this thing out and see if these screws are tightened. They should be firmly tightened. If you have any travel room on there, then just keep doing it. If they keep needing to be tightened, swap the plug out like I did, something is wrong. But if the first time you go to do this, you can tighten them down a little bit and they stay tight, well, yours might've been like mine. It wasn't firmly tightened to begin with. And you can see from this plug that uh, it was generating enough heat 
that I'm surprised I didn't smell burning plastic. So uh, thank you if you stay tuned for all this. I think this is pretty serious stuff, but there's no real entertaining way than to just uh, talk to you like we're at the campsite. So if you have any experience with anything like this or you test yours out and find that it needs to be tightened, make sure to leave a comment. I appreciate you guys watching the channel. See you guys next time.